so today we are going to discuss the mechanism of action of acyclovir acyclovir is a nucleoside analog specifically it is an analog of guanosin so if you see you are seeing the structure of guanosin guanosin is guanine plus ribose that is this is deoxyguanosin because the sugar is deoxyribose if you add a phosphate it will become guanosin ribose phosphate okay guanosin phosphate that is gmp guanosin monophosphate okay where are we going to add the phosphate to the 5 prime or 3 prime tell me where are we going to add it is to the 5 prime okay but this 3 prime hydroxyl group is very very important so that we can add the next nucleotide during the dna synthesis for dna synthesis we need free 3 prime oh group very very important okay so gmp is a nucleotide gdp is also a nucleotide gtp is also a nucleotide guanosin is a nucleoside remember this it, this is a nucleoside the phosphorylated nucleosides are nucleotides so with this basic biochemistry let us go to the acyclovir mechanism acyclovir see this is an analog of nucleoside that is your guanosin but the problem is 3 prime oh group is missing so if you incorporate guanosin into the growing dna that the chain will get terminated this will cause chain termination okay we have already studied that dideoxynucleotides used in sanger dna sequencing they also cause chain termination so like this acyclovir is going to cause chain termination so how is it causing chain termination let us see acyclovir once it enters the viral infected cells there is a viral thymidine kinase this is a pyrimidine kinase okay this viral thymidine kinase will phosphorylate acyclovir to acyclovir monophosphate then gmp kinase will again phosphorylate this to acyclovir diphosphate okay now again there is an enzyme nucleoside diphosphate kinase which will phosphorylate this to acyclovir triphosphate so this is a viral kinase okay these two are cellular kinases okay so this enzyme is encoded by the herpes virus so acyclovir is effective against hsv varicella zoster virus and epstein barr virus so these are all virus belong to herpes viridae family okay so this you should know so we were discussing this so viral thymidine kinase and the cellular kinases you should know the difference now this acyclovir triphosphate can now go and be incorporated into the growing dna as i have already told you there is no 3 prime oh group in the acyclovir okay so because of this the chain gets terminated now the question is how can we say that acyclovir is specific to the viral infected cell won't it go and affect the normal cell so the answer is in your harrison uninfected cells that is the normal cells they do not phosphorylate significant amounts of acyclovir the reason is acyclovir has highest affinity to viral thymidine kinase okay so viral kinase will be present only in the infected cell 
Number one. The second reason is acyclovir triphosphate is a more potent inhibitor of viral DNA polymerase compared to your normal cellular DNA polymerase. Okay. So that's it for acyclovir. This question has been asked in Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University MBBS exam. It's just a two mark question. So for two mark writing this much is more than enough. You must be thinking what is this curb 65? Do you remember what is curb 65? So this is your curb 65. Okay. So happy learning guys. So these are all the upcoming videos on this mechanism of action. I have made power point on heparin and tranexamic acid and I want your suggestion also.